Hey everybody, how are we doing today? It's Eric once again at Learn Max, and I have a new tutorial for you today. Um, basically, I've been gotten some questions that people have been asking me about uh, kind of stepping through some of the Max tutorials that are built into Max and just kind of getting my take on it and maybe giving you some background on it because, uh, well, uh, maybe we can, you know, kind of shed some light on things that aren't obvious. You try to read through all the text and so on. So anyway, um, if you have Max for Live or you have Max, the thing to do first off uh, in Max, you can always go up and select Max Tutorials, MSP Tutorials, Digital Tutorials, and it'll give you a list of tutorials. And the ones we're going to look at today are, where are they in here? Oh, uh, message ordering and some simple math. Okay, so debugging program flow and uh, performing calculations. Okay, everybody loves math. Of course, we all love math, right? Yeah, not quite everybody. But anyway, okay, so message ordering. Now, you're going to see these little dots here, these little circles. These are called buttons, and buttons uh, issue bang messages, right? So if we open up the... I hate when I do that. Uh, max, 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 max. There we are, max. Okay. First, we're going to unlock it. You can click unlock down there, or you can hold down the command key on the Mac and just click on any white space in there. And that'll let you edit things. If you hit B, that gives you a button. You see the button inspector back here? Great. Okay. Uh, so that would give you a button. I'm going to uh, lock that again. Okay. Now, messages. Um, you've no doubt, if you've dealt with Macs, you're going to see all these, these little... Uh, uh, patch cords that connect objects uh, one to another and messages travel along those patch cords. Now, the things important to remember, message ordering. Objects pass messages from right to left. So what that means is if I bang this object, the order is going to be right to left. One, two, three. All right. They look like they're happening simultaneously, but in an instant, they happen one, two, three. Okay. So that's important because if you want to have something happen first, you want to make sure it happens to the right. If you want to have it last, it happens to the left. Okay. Now, if things happen to be lined up perfectly, they're going to go from bottom to top. Okay. Click. Looks like it happens instantaneously. Four, five, six. Now, if you want to see how that works, you can turn on debugging. Okay. Enable debugging. And let's see what happens next. All right. See that one blinking? Yep. That's saying, all right, there. That's that one happening. And we're going to continue. Next one happens. Next one happens. Okay, they all happened. All right, so debugging is very cool. If you've never tried debugging in Max, you definitely should try it. It can help all sorts of uh, it will help with all sorts of issues. You can really kind of see things, you know, step through things. Uh, a lot of traditional programmers uh, might want to do that just to see kind of the differences between dealing with Max and and you know debugging environments and stuff that they're kind of used to. All right, so let's look here. Let's look a quick example using a depth first traversal. Uh, wow, that's a lot of uh, syllables. But anyway, what that means is it's combining the uh, right to left and bottom to top. So what's going to happen? Okay, now. If I click up here, the first thing that's going to happen, I look the outlets from this guy, the one, the rightmost one is number seven. So that's going to happen first. Okay, it's going to happen here. All right. Now I have two things that are connected and they happen to be uh, vertically oriented. So the bottom one's going to happen first. Okay, number eight. Now there's nothing but nine hanging off here. So nine happens next. All right. And then we're going to go back out again. This guy, 10 happens next. Not, only thing hanging out of 10 is 11. So that finishes. Then 12 happens. Goes top to bottom. Now you might say, oh, I thought it was supposed to happen bottom to top. Well, in this case, there's only one thing attached to each object. So of course, they're going to go this one, bangs that one, bangs that one, bangs that one. Okay, It's not as if there's like some path it can choose to come down here and then work its way back up. It's really only when these vertical uh, rows are all attached to the same object. So that's why that happens. Okay. Looks like everybody happens at first. Enable debugging. You can see that. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll step through. Seven, then eight, then nine, then ten, then eleven, and so on. They all happened. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Done. Okay. You get the idea. All right, now, another really, really important window to know about is, if we come up here in Windows, the Max window, all right? Oh, and that's going to jump over here. Sorry, got multiple things going on. Jump back. Sorry, you just saw all my email and all that. Uh, okay, so 
you can see I had a bunch of stuff going on here and enabled my interfaces and whatnot. I'm going to select all that, delete it, so you can see what's going on here. All right, let's come back over here. All right, now, again, you might see over here, oh, that's wacky, what's going on? Okay, so this, if this bangs, then it's going to say 60, 50, 40. And they're all coming back into a print command, so this is a good, if I click on A, you'll see 60, 50, 40. So 40 is the last thing to happen. All right, so how do you deal with that? Okay, well, there's lots of different ways. You can use the trigger object, you can use the bang bang object, uh, all sorts of other things as well. But trigger and bang bang are probably the most common ones, uh, other than you know physically rearranging your patches on the screen. So what bang bang does is allow you to generate specific number of bangs, and they happen in the specific order. They happen right to left. So say you wanted it to come out 40, 50, 60 instead of 60, 50, 40. What they did here, they used the bang bang object and then patched the first one, which is the rightmost one, to 40, the middle one to 50, the, 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 the leftmost one, the last one to 60. So B happens in the uh, other order, the reverse order. You see the print objects here? Yep. If you've never seen them before, print prints to the max window. If you put something in there, like print B, print A, it prefixes that. It says, okay, this is that object, right? That is the B print object. That is the A print object. It's a convenient way to say, oh, where did that print come from? Rather than just printing randomly all over the place. Okay, so here we're going to contrast uh, two different things. Here's, I'm going to click on this guy. Okay, I get right, middle, and left because it went right, middle, and left. Here's the trigger object, and what trigger allows you to do is uh, it's kind of a more, far more elaborate version of the bang bang in which you can pass integers, you can pass bangs, you can pass floats, you can pass all kinds of stuff. So okay, I click on 90, it triggers. III means I want three outlets that are integers. So it's going to pass this message as three integers, and it's going to go one, two, three, right to left, just like the same. And you'll notice here it said left, middle, right, because they played with the patch cords and moved them around. Ah, okay, here, T, that's shorthand for trigger, T, uh, it creates a bang, a float, and an int from that same message. Okay, so it's going to convert. Out of this outlet is going to be a, just a straight bang, and so it doesn't care what the value really was, it's just going to say bang. This one's going to say F float. So a float's going to come out the middle, one's going to convert, you can see it over here. 90 get converted to 90 point something, so it's a float value. And the last is just a straight int. All right, so now, last but not least, look at this. Okay, so we've got an actual float number coming in. We use the trigger, we get a bang, a float. In this case, see last here? Okay, obviously it's not a bang, a float, or an int, so it just spits out the message there. So last gets spit out, is gets spat out, spit, spat, you're right. Uh, I means, okay, there's an integer coming out of this one. So it's going to try to convert that to an integer. In this case, 0.07 gets converted to an integer, which is zero. Okay, so it's going to convert that. And the first thing is going to print out first. So you see here, first, zero, is last, 0.00 for the float, and bang for the bang. So there you go. There is our message ordering tutorial. Okay, and they have a little pop quiz here, and I'm going to tell you the answer because... Well, why not? I'm telling you all the answers. All right, so why is this a bad idea? They've got four bangs connected. What do you think? You got it yet? Who's raising their hand? Correct! It's an infinite loop. So if I clicked on one of these things, this bang is going to bang this, which is going to bang that, 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 and so on and so forth. Ready? Boom! All right. An important concept, the stack overflow. Outlets are disabled until this message is cleared, so Max has some things built into it to make sure you don't blow up the Earth, the world, the universe, whatever. So isn't that nice of it? So um, you can clear messages. Let's see, come up here. Where are we? Where are we? Oh, somewhere in here. Oh, I'm going to embarrass myself by forgetting where that is. Oh, somewhere we can clear this. Oh. Oh, until this message is cleared, duh, click there. All right, so we're back to, back up and running again. Everything is back to normal. Yay, congratulations, you just passed the tutorial number five, message ordering. So uh, I've been rambling long enough. We're going to cover simple math in another tutorial. Remember, tune in. Some of the other tutorials are a little bit more in-depth. This is kind of a real beginner's one, but uh, 
you know, hopefully it sheds some light on things and makes everything a little bit more understandable. Or if you don't have the time to go through all the tutorials or wade through things and or you're sitting on a bus and you happen to have an iPad and you're watching this online and or on your iPhone or Android phone or you're just lonely and like hearing my voice. And, you know, well, whatever. Okay. Um, until next time, this is Eric at LearnMax. Have a good day. Happy patching.